So what are the opportunities that arise on basis of these technological and human resources that create the requisite base of the digital age? The opportunities arise by the possibility to modernize different sectors of society by putting parts of the information and communication flows in these sectors into electronic networks. That's where we get the e-government, e-business, e-health, e-education, and many more e-sectors that we will talk about today. Let's start with e-business, which is uh, a very important aspect of the digital age, the digital economy. A very tangible and famous example is the use of mobile phones of fishermen in Kerala in India. So in 1996, before they had mobile phones, this econ economics professor Jensen, he went to villages in, in India and found these fishermen who basically lived in poverty. They were working, catching fish, but not enough fish to feed their families, way too little to sell them and to make money in order to buy other things like medicine and so forth. So basically living in poverty. Five years later, after mobile phones were installed in 2001, he came back and he found that somehow many of them were able to lift themselves out of poverty. What happened? First of all, with the mobile phones, fishermen were able to communicate with each other. So if one went out on the ocean, uh, this fisherman could say, well, there are no fish here today. Let's go over here. And somebody else said, well, let's go over here. Here we have many sardines today. So they were, they were able to optimize their fishing routes, catching much more fish than ever before, also protecting them from surprising storms or hurricanes because now they were able to communicate also with the weather forecast and among each other, which also increased their safety. It's very dangerous to go in a shabby boat like that out into the ocean. And most importantly, they were able to communicate directly with the demand and adjust their supply of fish with the demand in the market. For example, in this village, there are 17 landing posts. And in some of these landing posts on a given day, um, a market shop owner would offer three times more money for a certain fish than another one. Before they had phones, it was just guesswork to which landing station they would go to in order to sell their fish. But with the mobile phone, they were able to optimize their daily catching strategy, even before they went out on the ocean, they were able to communicate and say, today, let's don't go for sardines because today the price of sardines is down. They were able to cut out many middlemen that intermediate between also the shop owner uh, at the market and the fishermen, and with that, pocket the money themselves. So they lifted themselves out of poverty with their own means. To say it in the words of Confucius, if you want to help a poor man, don't give him a fish, teach him how to fish. And the mobile phones are kind of like these teachers that, have, that provide a very tangible opportunity for people to lift themselves out of poverty. So the idea of the digital economy is to digitalize all kind of information communication processes that happen between supply and demand. That involves all the information processes that happen within the company. The family of softwares in charge of that, specialized for that, are called ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Softwares, that help to manage all the resources within the company. Uh, the family of software specialized on the relationships with my supplier are called SCM, Supply Chain Management Software. For example, these are databases that administer my inventory in my company. The family of softwares connected to my customers are called CRM, Customer Relationship Management. For example, if you go to Amazon to buy something, the interface that you see, the interface that stores your shopping history, that gives you recommendations on which things to buy. These are all customer relationship management software tools that Amazon is using. And the kind of software family that tries to combine the supply chain management, enterprise resource planning, and customer relationship management are called business intelligence in general. Now, of course, my customers also have a supply chain management that communicates directly with my CRM. And my suppliers also have a customer relationship management that connects 
directly to my supply chain management and then these kind of softwares autonomously talk to each other. Uh, then of course the suppliers of my suppliers are connected to their suppliers by digital means and the customers of my customers as well. Most companies in the economy do not directly interact with the client. They are some kind of supplier of a supplier of a supplier which then interacts with the client as a real retailer. So the idea of the digital economy is then to digitalize the demand of the client in real time also over internal business to business marketplaces with the supplier and the information flow here happens any day. So Walmart, for example, was one of the first companies that really pushed this complete digitalization. And that's where the saying comes from that if you as a client pick a gallon of milk off the shelf in Walmart, it automatically in real time already calls the cow to tell it to produce another gallon of milk. The digitalization between supply and demand in real time means that pricing is being digitalized because prices are what intermediate between supply and demand. And digital networks enable us to adjust for supply and demand and therefore for prices in real time. For example, when I started to work in this field in the early 2000s, there was this guy who wrote a book on digital marketing and he decided to sell it through the theory of dynamic online pricing. So he offered it online for $60 and if nobody bought it because there was no demand, the price dropped over time. And if somebody bought it, the price went up again. So you could also then just program an algorithm and say, I will only buy this book if it's down to $20 because it's not worth it for me. And then on a Wednesday morning at 3 a.m., the book was bought and the price went up again uh, because there was a new demand. So also the digitalization does not only allow us to adjust for price in real time, it also allows us to digitalize the buying and selling decisions. The market that pioneered this digitalization logic is of course the stock market. A surprisingly big percentage of transactions on the stock market are not executed by people, but autonomously by algorithms. 80% of the buying and selling decisions on stock markets are often executed by algorithms alone. And without adult supervision, that can sometimes have very severe consequences. These are called flash crashes or very funny ones. For example, private uh, sellers, not banks, private sellers started to use this algorithmification of buying and selling decisions as well as these two book companies here who sold a book on the genetics of a fly on Amazon. So this is just a book on the genetics of a fly, nothing special. The one seller offered it at this one given day for $1.7 million and the other one offered it for $2 million. And that's when you should have bought it because the following day, the one offered it for $18 million and the other one for $23 million. What happened there? Well, it was a bidding war between two algorithms without adult supervision. And I don't think anybody bought the book. I think somebody who has $23 million rather bought a penthouse in Manhattan or something. But these things, they can happen. And I guess algorithms are learning to make these decisions for us. And the real-time adjustment between supply and demand combined with algorithmic decision-making has some very interesting consequences. Check out this video by Kevin Slavin about how algorithms shape our world. Digitalization does not only change the interactions between supply and demand in digital marketplace, it also enters inside companies and digitalizes the entire internal workflow. For example, here you can see a modern car company. You can see that biological workers have basically been replaced by robotic arms, by robots, and human decision making has been replaced by digital decision-making through artificial intelligence. For example, in this situation here, you can see 275 
robots autonomously communicating with, through digital means with each other, executing all the necessary steps to produce a car. Humans are nowhere seen. They don't even need to apply. Robots execute these and digital networks, digital communication is the basis that enables that. And you can see that a lot nowadays, sometimes even a little unexpected. For example, every time you buy a product on Amazon, check out what's happening back in the inventory storage space of Amazon.